I have not done many NBA related podcasts. I haven't done any basketball related podcasts. I haven't really talked about Michigan basketball much. I haven't really talked about the Miami Heat since the opening of the season. And that's my apologies, but there's something I really have to talk about that I've pretty much been putting off, and that's the fiasco, the trash can, the dumpster fucking fire that is the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, if you know me, you know that I am a huge LeBron James fan, GOAT James, and um, this season has been a disaster for the Lakers. I am not a Lakers fan. Not a Lakers fan. I'm just a LeBron James fan, and what I see from this organization right now is pretty much pathetic. And yeah, I have I said some things on social media here and there, but today I want to get into the whole dumb shit they got going on in LA. Here's the thing. Okay, so a few years back when they when they hired Frank Vogel, people forget he was not even close to the top candidate that they wanted. LeBron wanted Ty Lue. They didn't want to give Ty Lue the years and pick his staff and all the other stupid shit that they never do for head coaches. Uh, Jason Kidd was on the staff. Should have just gave the damn job to Jason Kidd. And then the uh, the former Memphis coach, uh, oh my God, I forget his name. My, my apologies, my apologies. He was uh, one of the uh, one of the assistant coaches, and also they also went after Phoenix coaches. Phoenix coach, and you see what he's fucking doing in Phoenix, right? What you give Frank Vogel the job, fine, cool, doesn't matter. You got LeBron James in AD. We'll make it work. You got Kyle Kuzma, Caruso, you got Harold, you got Dwight Howard, you got McGee. Like, you guys have a nice team. And we know what happened. Uh, one year, LeBron James, they won the title in the bubble. Uh, last year, uh, he and uh, AD were hurt a lot. AD was hurt in the playoffs while they, they went up 2-1 against Phoenix. AD got hurt. End of that series, right? Um, This year, this will pass off season, that is. We need a third star. Who are we going to get, right? So, it was about the Buddy Hill trade that sent KCP, Kuzma, and Harold to the Wizards for Russell Westbrook. I mean, well, it was supposed to be the other way around. They're supposed to go to the Kings, right? But at the last minute, Russell Westbrook comes to L.A. Shocked everybody. Shocked me. Like, whoa, what? Okay. Um... And at the time, obviously, I was like, yo, this doesn't fit. This just doesn't fit, right? And um, But I understood it basketball-wise. I understood that, look, the way the league is right now, if, a, if, if, if LeBron James sits at any point, even when, they had, when, even when they had the young core around them, when LeBron James sat and it was Anthony Davis or whoever else in the game, they were horrible. Like, the, the, the plus minuses were ridiculous. So I understood the mindset of, okay, we need a, our third guy has to be a dog. He has to be a dog. And we all know Russell Westbrook is a dog. He does not ever cheat the game. He plays hard every single night. So when you have those Tuesdays, those Monday nights, those Wednesday nights when LeBron James is just not himself, Anthony Davis is screwing up, you throw a Russell Westbrook on the court and say, hey, man, take it home. A funny thing happened, though. Russell Westbrook ended up having a horrible season. Now, he's he's picked it up as of late, which I projected. I projected. I said, look, man, this is not going to work early in the season. It's not. So don't even look at their record to begin the season with. Since the season, because they all have to adjust. The bad thing about that is AD went down. Then he came back. And then LeBron James went down. And then he came back. And AD went down again. Came back. AD went down again. And it's like they have no consistent uh, camaraderie with those three. But also, okay, let's just say you you want those three on your roster, right? Let's just say you want those three. You can't fill the roster with a Kent Bazemore, who was the one signing. When that signing came, I said, this is about to be a shit show. This is about to be a shit show. You name me. Anytime in any game ever you've seen Kent Bazemore do something that's impactful that's going to help a LeBron James team. Seriously? So whatever, cool. Not trying to dog the man, but look, man, he's not a good basketball player. It is what it is. Kendrick Nunn I thought was a great pickup, but Kendrick Nunn has not played all season. I don't know what happened to my dog K. Nunn. That's my guy from the Miami Heat. That is my dude. But, hey, he has not played all season. 
You get a Carmelo Anthony. I understood why Carmelo Anthony um, got got on with the Lakers. It's about time him and LeBron James at least play each other, play with each other for at least one one year before they both retire. I understand that something they should have done a long time ago. It was just to look, man. Let's just see if we can get you a ring this year with us. We should have done this a long time ago. Let's see what happens. Carmelo Anthony has pretty much done what you thought he would do. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. You know, can just contribute a little bit off the bench. That's it. You didn't sign up for nothing else. Then you got Trevor Ariza. You got Austin Reeves. You got uh, Dwight Howard. You have, um, my God, man. Who else is on this trash that scene? Uh, Trevor Ariza, Avery, Avery Bradley. Um, you just have a bunch of guys. Oh, Malik Monk. Malik Monk has been doing business in the last week, two weeks. Um, shout out to my dog. He's, he's really good. Um, but... That's the team. Now, I like, there's no fucking way, fucking way, as a GM, as a owner, as anybody who knows basketball, you looked at that roster and said, yo, they going to win the championship with it. The there's no, listen, no fucking way you looked at this roster and said, this is going to win it. No fucking, I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe it. Rob Polinka, Linda Rambis, who the fuck is that? Kurt Rambis, you're trash. Jeannie Buss, you want to take the team from your brother? Okay, you got the team. Okay, you got Anthony Davis and LeBron. You got Anthony Davis and LeBron. You can't fill the fucking basketball team? Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? So you mean to tell me you couldn't find any young 3 and D guys to fill a roster with? Half the damn NBA has a bunch of guys that are not that good. But you know what they do every single night? They play defense and they make threes. And they contribute. Hell, a lot of these teams are beating teams like Miami Heat just because they're playing harder and they're making shots. This is fucking ridiculous. And people say, oh, well, LeBron James won't rush. Listen, man. LeBron James, who knows more basketball, <clears throat> who can forget more basketball than anybody knows. You thought he looked at the roster and said, look, get rid of KCP. Get rid of Caruso, our perimeter defense, and give me a bunch of old guys who fucking play no defense. You really think that's what he said? You gotta be a fucking retard. I'm sorry, the word, but it is what it is. You have to be a straight fucking idiot to think that that's what that man told the front office. I mean, come on, man. Come on. For people who think I hate on MJ, look behind, look behind me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, other side. Look behind me. Look behind me. Look behind me. Look behind me. For those who say, I hate on MJ. Ain't that MJ? Ain't that MJ? Fuck out of here, man. Anyway, I, I had to go on a tangent because a lot of people just feel like, I, I hate MJ. I, I am an 80s baby. Who the fuck you thought I grew up on watching? Who? Whatever. But as I was saying, let me get back to this trash show as the damn Lakers. So at the trade deadline, Rob Polinka decides, man, we're, we're good enough to get we get healthy. Right now. In what fucking world? Now I'm not going to talk about things that I you know uh, listen to and seen on podcasts. I'll just say go if you can go find the video on oh, Chris Boussard and Rob Parker on uh, the Odd Couple on Fox Sports Radio, where they talk about the blame of LeBron James. Being the one to orchestrate Russell Westbrook coming to the Lakers. And Chris Broussard pushes back and says, no, I know for somebody who would know that that was not a LeBron James only move. That was, hey, we got two trades, Buddy Hill, Russell Westbrook, which one do you want? LeBron James said, man, I'm cool with both. That's a L.A. Lakers management saying, well, we're going to go with Russ then. And LeBron James said, hey, cool. Russ is Russ. I got it. Let's, let's make it happen. Does that sound like a guy that went into the front office and said, hey, man, give me Russell Westbrook? No, but he's not going to complain about it. He's not going to complain about it. But what he, what he would complain about is it's the trading deadline. Everybody's trying to get better. All contenders are adding buyout guys, adding, doing little trades. You still sat back like this in your comfy L.A. office and said, Nah, nah, we don't need nobody else. 
We don't need nobody else. We don't need no shooters. We don't need no defenders. We don't need nothing. We cool. LeBron James has had to score 50 points a fucking game for us to win basketball games. You shit me. Now, I put a lot of blame early in the season on Rob Palenka. And at this point, I'm going to leave that man alone. Right? I'm going to leave him alone because, I listen, at this point, I don't know who the fuck could have coached this roster. But what I will say about Rob Palenka is you're a defensive coach. And for your team to give up 80 fucking points in a half, it's coach. That is pathetic. 80 point And to give up 20-point leads on a consistent basis is pathetic. I wrote on Facebook weeks ago, this team is out on Frank Vogel. It's very obvious. It's very obvious. To keep him around makes zero sense. But it's the end of the season. Hey, what you going to do now? You got a fucking, what, two weeks, a week and a half left in the NBA season? Might as well finish it off, right? They should have at least after trading deadline or a little bit after trading deadline got rid of him. And it's not his fault. Again, it's not his fault. But he's not doing anything to help coaching wise. They don't play any defense. And for you to be a defensive coach, what are you doing? If you're if you're not going to play defense, then what? Like, I, I mean, you tell me what are you coaching? Because you're not coaching LeBron James. Frank Vogel definitely is not coaching LeBron James. That's why you needed a Ty Lue. You needed a Jason Kidd. You needed somebody with some substance. Not some dude who got fired in Orlando and nobody even wanted him. But whatever. I'm going to give you guys some help. The offseason. This is what I would do. Some realistic things that I would do in the offseason. If you really want to get rid of Russell Westbrook, you find teams who would love to get rid of that cap space after one season uh, with draft picks or young guys. Like OKC. OKC seems to have all the damn picks in the draft for the next few years. Uh, the Indiana Pacers, they trade us a bonus. They seem like they don't know where where the fuck they're going. They I, I don't know what the hell the Pacers are doing. And they seem to have Buddy Hill too. So, what I would do if I was the Lakers, I would try to see um, if I could get one of those young guys from OKC to send and send Russell 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 Westbrook back to uh, OKC. But you have to have contracts, man. So you gotta might have a, a thirteen. A lot of these things, a lot of these things might be a thirteen, um, except for the Indiana ones. Um, see if you can get a Miles Turner. Because I don't know what his future is in Indiana. Uh, um, a Malcolm Brogdon. A, uh, a Buddy Hill. Like, see if you can finally get Buddy Hill in a deal to L.A. Um, my team, the Miami Heat. <clears throat> I've been wondering about Duncan Robinson for a long time this season. He's really not been the same guy. And when he, like, to start the game off, teams go right at him. They, he's always in foul trouble. He hasn't been shooting that well. Now, in the last few games... He has been shooting well, and he has been coming off the bench now. So that, I think, helps to bring him in with the second unit and give him some relief to get some open shots. And uh, maybe you could see if you can get a three-team deal because Miami does not want no fucking West, what, Russell Westbrook. Um, see if you can get a t- three-team deal and um, uh, maybe a Duncan Robinson can come. You get you a shooter. Maybe you can get a Miles Turner from Indiana or O'Brien, like I said, another point guard. Uh, Buddy Hill, I, I, I think my problem with Buddy Hill is um, he has games, man, where he just does not look like he play. Like, you look at the stat sheet and you go, did he play? Like, he might give you six threes in a game, four threes in a game, or he might give you one. You know what I'm saying? But I also look at it and say, if he's playing with LeBron and AD, he will have totally open shots. For a shooter like that, I think that this time around, you don't make the mistake. You go and get him. You go and get him. You go and get a guy like Miles Turner, a young, big guy. You go and get some young 3 and D guys. Just just fill your roster with a bunch of, you know, guys who don't make much money, who are 3 and D guys, who can play defense, who can move side to side, play defense and shoot uh, hit threes. And then... Find a, a young athletic big to pair with Anthony Davis or maybe a veteran. It doesn't really matter. The bigs aren't really the problem here. But the perimeter defense is a huge fucking problem. And I just say Duncan Robinson because he is a sniper. And I know LeBron James has always played with a sniper. And I think that if he, he, you can get du- uh, Duncan Robinson, Buddy Hill. Those would be my number two, my, my, my one and two. 
I don't think Miami is going to give up Duncan Robinson unless they get something coming back to them that is um, something that helps their team. The, the game they're not going to do well a contract, bring the contract over, and you know next year we take no. That's not they're trying to win championships now with Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler and those guys. So um, the the team I'm targeting. Honestly, is the Indiana Pacers. I would look at OKC because of the draft picks and the young talent they have. Maybe you can get Shea Gilders Alexander. Maybe. Nobody knows what. They're going to give him a big-time contract or what. Um, but I would look at those two teams, especially maybe Duncan Robinson, maybe the Sacramento Kings, something like that. Uh, there's a lot of teams that have a bunch of role players that will fit perfectly with LeBron James. It's all about what your future is going to be. Are you going to try to trade AD? Are you going to try to trade Russell Westbrook? Are you going to bring them back? That's that's another thing. If you bring them back, then oh, holy shit, man. Um, but I, all I know is, again, it's not this it's not this guy's fault, but Frank Vogel, my God, man, if he returns as a head coach, if I'm LeBron James, I'm going to lose my shit. Like, I, no, 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 no. Frank Vogel will forever be a championship head coach. I get it. I certainly fucking get it. But my God, man, no. Nope, 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 no. That's my rant, my podcast about the Lakers. Oh, man. Guys, my name make the fucking play <laughs> the play in. Hey, man. I have nothing else to say, man. Peace.